I have two cans of Pierce type R134A and one self-sealing can of R134A. I'll use the self-sealing can last so I can remove the tap and the refrigerant can be stored. I'm going to record the full weight of each can. This Harbor Freight Manifold has the thumb valve service port fittings so I can draw a vacuum on the manifold as well as the HVAC system in the vehicle. I'll be charging low side so I don't have to hook up the high side. I'm turning the tap clockwise until it stops to fully pierce the can. Then I back off counterclockwise to move the piercing needle out of the way. Opening the valve so refrigerant can enter the blue hose. The can of refrigerant was indoors at 74 to 75 degrees so you see that it stabilizes at saturation pressure of 78 PSIG. Opening the valve so refrigerant can enter the vehicle's AC system. The liquid in the can evaporating quickly cools the can so it brings the saturation pressure down very low. At this point, no more refrigerant is entering the vehicle system. Enter one bucket of hot water to force the liquid in the can to evaporate. Remember the 8 ounces of refrigerant oil we put in the compressor? Let's turn the compressor to force some of that oil out so the valves don't get slugged when the compressor is finally engaged by the engine. Let's keep the can floating and let's also try not to get the tap wet. The can is empty. Close the blue valve on the manifold before removing the can from the tap. I'll be adding the entire contents of the second can. That'll bring us up to approximately 24 ounces of 32 ounces required. We can charge by liquid on the Sierra by inverting the can. This helps prevent the can of Freon from becoming cold. You can force the remaining refrigerant in the can into the system by placing the can upright into the hot water. Since this is not a self-sealing can, I'm opening up the hose at the manifold to bleed out any air that entered when I had the can disconnected. Reopening the low side of the manifold to allow refrigerant to enter the vehicle. You know the routine, now we're keeping the can floating in the hot water to force the liquid in the can to evaporate to a gas and enter the vehicle. Let's weigh the first two empty cans so we can figure out how much refrigerant we need from the third can. The weight of the can when full was 15.26 ounces. The weight of the can when empty is 3.31 ounces. 11.95 ounces was put in the vehicle. The full weight of the second can was 15.42 ounces. The empty weight of the second can was 3.27 ounces. We put 12.15 ounces of refrigerant into this vehicle. This brings us to a total of 24.1 ounces of 32 ounces required. Our target is 32 ounces. The first can we added 11.95 ounces. The second can we added 12.15 ounces. That means we need 7.9 ounces from the third can to equal 32 ounces. The full weight of the third can is 12.4 ounces. Since we need 7.9 ounces, the final weight of the third can should be 4.5 ounces. The weight of the third can was 12.4 ounces so obviously some of the refrigerant has been discharged before we purchased it. By all means feel free to add one extra ounce to the vehicle. I'll be adding most but not all of the contents of the third can. Since this is a self-sealing can and self-sealing tap I can remove the can from the tap. I will re-weigh the can multiple times until it is the required final weight. Leaving the hose attached will not allow accurate weighing. Our target weight for the last can was 4.5 ounces. 
it's 4.285 ounces which is good enough.